KD Plasma is without a doubt one, if not the best desktop environment when it comes to customization on the Linux desktop. In comparison to GNOME, it also comes with way more features out of the box, which have been anticipated for years at this point. But dang, for someone like me who just learned to appreciate GNOME's workflow and design philosophy, wouldn't it be nice if we could replicate that on a, on paper, superior desktop environment? When I started to customize my Plasma desktop, I came across some very interesting features which got me thinking. Is it actually possible to recreate GNOME with all of the advantages that Plasma comes with? In today's video, I'm going to show you the power of KD Plasma by replicating the GNOME desktop environment as close as possible. So stay tuned, don't forget to give this video a like and while you're at it, also subscribe to the channel. And here we go. So let's take a look at the GNOME shell and how it operates. By default, you have an empty desktop with a black panel that stretches across the top of your screen. On the right, you have some quick settings, which contain power controls, some shortcuts and the ability to toggle several connectivity options. In the middle, we have the date and time, as well as a calendar with a notification area. And on the left, we have the activities button, which triggers the application overlay. This overlay can also be triggered with the Windows or Meta key, or by moving your mouse into the top left corner. If you have several windows open, then GNOME automatically distributes them evenly, so that you can easily find what you are looking for. You can quickly move windows to different workspaces, switch between them or open up new ones from the application menu. Essentially, the whole workflow of GNOME resolves about simplicity and to evenly distribute windows across workspaces. So let's try to replicate it. Now the first thing will of course be to adjust the panel. Within the edit mode, we just drag it to the top, adjust the height and set the opacity to opaque. Next I added two spacers and drag the calendar widget into the middle, like so. With a right click and configure digital clock, we can change the appearance of the widget. First we always want to show the date besides the time. Then we can adjust the format of the date. I personally like to include a short name of the day, the day itself and of course the month. But you can essentially choose whatever format you personally like. The link to their documentation is right below. Alright, so let's hit apply and move on. I'm now going to delete all the shortcuts from the panel, open up a program, right click it and swap out the task manager from only icons to window list. Next we want to open up KDE Software Center Discover, head on over to Plasma Add-ons, Plasma Widgets and install the Control Center, which is heavily inspired by macOS. But since it's the closest to GNOME, we'll just go with that. In the Panel Edit mode, I'd like to edit the system tray and enable the Control Center right here. Now if we try to open it however, as you can see, there might be some dependencies missing. So let's fix that by opening up the developer's github page and download the following dependencies with the terminal. If a dependency cannot be resolved on your distro, try to find it with your package manager search functionality. Sometimes on a lightweight desktop environment installation, you might also need to install more dependencies. However, it's best to just look it up online. Sometimes a relogin can also help. It's just trial and error, but there it is. Again, we can adjust some settings like the scaling, what's getting displayed and change the icon. We unfortunately cannot make it stretch over the buttons on top like on GNOME, but given that the menu itself is not all that useful, it's probably better that way. Ok, so now let's move on to the workflow and workspaces. In the settings app, in workspace behavior and screen edges, we can set several triggers for what happens if you move your mouse into a certain corner. One of these functionalities is the so-called overview, which like on GNOME allows you to zoom out of your current application or screen and see all of your other open windows. We can also drag and drop them to other desktops and search for applications. Pretty cool. Let's set the activation delay to 0 milliseconds so that it triggers instantly. I personally also want to be able to trigger that overview with the Windows or Meta key. However, unfortunately, while there is a hotkey for that, simply setting it to Meta or its alias Alt plus F1 won't just do. 
since Plasma automatically binds this key to the application menu. However, we can change that. Simply enter the following command in order to set the meta key to launch the overview and reconfigure KWIN. Now every time I press the Windows key, it automatically opens up the overview. If you want to revert to the application menu, then you can do it like this. Ok, so getting closer. However, there are still a couple more things missing. For once, let's make sure that we set the virtual desktops to slide and adjust the speed to our liking. Now, unfortunately, there is no easy way to switch between desktops with your scrolling wheel, since it only works on the desktop and not within applications, but at least it does work with keyboard hotkeys. If you want a different application launcher or are missing a classic GNOME menu, then Plasma Drawer is for you. Simply install it, right click the old launcher and switch to it. Just a reminder, if you bound the overview to your meta key, you can go ahead and revert it if you prefer the application menu instead. Now, we sadly can't drag and drop applications into folders directly, but we can manage them in the editor, create some categories or remove entries completely. You can also download and install the Advaita theme, change your icons, select a different mouse cursor and set the fonts to Cantorel. If you also don't like the vertical alt tabbing like me, then you can also install the thumbnail switcher from window management, task switcher and get new task switchers. Don't forget to set it as well. After a re-login, everything should get applied automatically and we can finish it off with installing some GNOME applications. As you can see, we now have a somewhat decent GNOME experience. Of course we are missing fancy animations, some hotkeys and of course proper GNOME-like menus. However, we did successfully create the core workflow. Especially the overview and use of workspaces or virtual desktops is incredibly important for me. The biggest advantage of this configuration is of course that you get more advanced features like adaptive sync, fractional scaling on Wayland, as well as a proper gaming experience if that's what you're into. I'm of course not saying that Plasma can be GNOME. This configuration feels a lot worse in comparison. However, there is still room to optimize, go deeper and with all of the advantages that Plasma has over GNOME, it is a better experience, but only for a more niche group like gamers for example. Nonetheless, while we couldn't quite manage to 100% replicate GNOME with some of its applications, we could get quite close. And you also shouldn't forget that essentially we didn't touch any of the underlying code. If you know what you're doing, then it really shows what the Plasma desktop is actually capable of. But that is something that I'm not yet capable of doing and it wouldn't have fit in this video anyway. But yeah, if you've still enjoyed this video, then please make sure to show it with a like. And if you're still here, then you should also consider subscribing to the channel as well. Right here, you already get to watch the next video. At all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are, I'll see you around.